everyone this is Angie at Stampin with Amore and today in my holiday series I have a cookie box to share with you and I know looking this way it doesn't look like much of anything but when you turn it that way it's a little house and um, you if you want to I, originally I was gonna close both all the flaps and just make a flat box because I, I thought that was cute too but then when I started putting it together I thought it looked like a little roof so I left that like that and I thought it came out really cute so this is the box I'm sharing today this video may be a little bit longer because it is a little bit more involved because I'm using a lot of framelits and um, it is a larger box this measures three and a quarter by five so you I actually made it as a cookie box you can use it for candy or a little gift because it's a really good size um, box so this is what we're gonna do today so let's get started okay so what you're gonna need is two pieces of 12 by seven and a half so you'll need two 12 by 12s and then just cut it down 12 by seven and a half so I'm using the basic black so you need two of those and to mat it you're going to need one piece that is three and a half by four and three quarters and that's for the front and that's this piece right here and then you're going to need three that are four and seven eighths by three and a quarter you're also going to need a piece of window sheet which is four inches by three and a quarter inches and then of course you'll need ribbon and some uh, scrap whisper white to stamp and cut on so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to first show you the stamp sets that I'm using and this is the festive fireplace you can decorate this window as much as however you want it you can put this little kitty on there or whatever you like I'm using this stamp set right here this little um, uh, whatever you call it <laughs> it's a swag a little um, swag and then this one um, I'm using the wreath and then the, I'm using the bow um, on this project and then on this one is oh what fun and I could not choose which saint sentiment to put on here because I love them all but I ended up using the do not open till Christmas so these are the two stamp sets and then the coordinating um, framelits is this festive fireside framelits and it has all the framelits for um, the uh, festive fireplace stamp set the one that I just showed you and then this is the hearth and home which has this window in it and then the little hearth that you can use for the fireplace so this is the window that we're going to be using okay so let's go ahead and get started scoring this and we're going to score both of these pieces exactly the same and I know that they're black and it's going to be a little bit hard to see I'll try to make it a little bit easier so what you're going to do first is you're going to score at one half inch and this is the seven and a half inch side and then you're going to score it at four and then you're going to turn it and you're going to score it at three and a half and then at eight and a half we're going to do both pieces the exact same way so we'll go ahead and do the half inch here and then four and then we're going to turn it and we're going to do it at three and a half and at eight and a half okay that is all the scoring that we're going to do now I'm going to go ahead and sharpen all these score marks so that it's a little bit easier for you to see where I'm cutting because it is black okay so on this we are going to cut this long piece right here it's like a little rectangle on the end this is our little flap side 
So you're going to cut that. And then we're going to do the same on this side. So you'll just have that little flap right there. I gotta get this straight. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on this one. Okay, so now we have two pieces. These two pieces are going to fit together like so. But first we have to cut the window in it. Okay, so before I bring the big shot up, I forgot. We need to mat these first because it makes it so much easier. Um, the first one that I made, I didn't mat it and I had to go back and cut the piece. So this is going to be the front. So let me see, we are going to put this together like that. So, I have to figure out which will be the front. So it doesn't really matter actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mat this piece right here as the front. And it's, and actually, this piece, I just wanted it to cover this whole piece. That's why I um, made this one piece bigger. I didn't want it to kind of be have little spaces on the ends like the, on the edges like the other ones and I'll show you what I mean in a minute so I am not putting any on the inside because we're cutting that out so this is going to be my front piece and then we'll go ahead and mat these and I'll show you here See, this one's going to have little spaces around the edges. Because I wanted some showing, but not on the front piece. You can do it however you like, but I like the way this looks the best. That's why I did it three different, two different sizes. And so they go like that, right? Yep. So make sure that you're matting the right side. That's why I'm putting side by side there because I know that's where my glue tab is going to be. And use a strong adhesive. I'm using the Fast Fuse for this. Okay, so there we are. We're all done matting. So let's go ahead and get the big shot now. And we're going to cut the window. Okay, so we're going to use our magnetic platform and a plate. And that's the front. And the way that I did this was it leaves a little bit of a less impression if you put it the cutting side up. So I'm going to place that up like that. And I'm going to pull this out just so make sure it's on the magnetic plate. This window, I want it to be a little bit more room on the top there. So I'm going to center it. And hopefully I can't get over it. And then I'm just going to place that over the top. Slide that over. Hopefully it's going to stay in place and be perfect when it comes out. Put your plate on top and then run it through. And that cracking is very normal. And this is pretty thick. That's why it is making all those noises. All right, so let's move it out of the way and see what we got here. So there we have it. There's the window. And then these pieces, you want to pop out, and it pops out actually really easy because we're going to use that window. All right, so the next step, oh, let me get this all off. 
Oh, I got something sticky on there. Look at it, did it. Tore a piece of my paper. These are new plates, believe it or not. I need to get some new ones. That makes me mad. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're going to do is use the do the window sheet. And I'm just going to put some close to the edge all the way around here. And I just find it easier to put it on here. And then we're just going to lay the window sheet on top. And then we're going to turn it back over and we're going to place this on back in here. And what I used was glue dots because the glue dots worked super good. So we're going to just place glue dots on I'm using quite a few of glue dots, but you want to make sure it doesn't fall off. So that should be good. And then I'm going to place this back in the window. So look how cute. Isn't that awesome? So now you have a real window. So now we're going to get some tear and tape because you want this box to stay together. And you need some strong double-sided adhesive. And we're going to put one here. And then we're going to put one on the other side also. Okay, so I'm going to remove the backing on this one and we're going to attach this here and line up your score marks make sure you have your score marks lined up really good and we'll just press that down so we have the box together you can see how big this is going to be so now the next thing I want to do is I want to cut up here on these Two of them are already done, but we're going to cut up these on both sides. All right, now we'll put the rest of the box together. So let me remove the adhesive backing on here. So there we go. Now we are going to fold in the bottom flaps. And I always like the front, you know, to go back. So I'm going to put adhesive first on this side. I'm going to use fast fuse here just to, I would use the tear and tape, but I'm going to use the fast fuse. Um, because I don't want to take the time in the video. Line that up and then turn it and do the same on this side. There are four layers. That's why I'm putting tape on board. I think I'm running out of my fast fuse. Okay. Let me see if I have another one that's ready. Yeah. Okay. So then let's put this one... So there's the bottom and this you can see how big that is and then we're going to just fold actually what I did was I took my corner rounder and I rounded the corners on all these I just like the way it looked better it kind of looked more professional so I'll just round the corners on all of these And you're going to put those two down 
and I'm going to use our triple corner punch and I'm going to create a slit just center that on your and you're going to make just a little slit there run it around that corner very good and then we're going to do the same on this other side so center it on here and I hope my head's not getting in the way and you got another slit so that's for our ribbon and our for our sentiment and stuff and it will close like that and my little window wants to come up I didn't press it down go on the inside and really press that down so that doesn't pop up want to pop up this one seems to want to pop up so let me stick another glue dot in there. I might not have gotten it on really good. Okay. So then these two will fold in and then we'll grab, I'll go ahead and grab my ribbon and just run the ribbon through here. And I like to leave like a lot a long strand because it looked it looked so much cuter when the ribbon was laying the tails were long. So I want to make sure I have enough to tie a bow. This is our seam binding ribbon and cherry cobbler. And then just adjust your bow how you like it. I'm not going to be real picky now because I have other things to do. So, um, okay, let's grab some Whisper White and stamp our little images. And actually, I've used every bit of scrap that I could find to stamp. Because um, you don't need... A lot to stamp these and I'm using mossy meadow cherry cobbler and then basic black for the sentiment and I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp and what I'll do is when I take it to the big shot I'll cut these all out at one time Isn't that pretty and then we're gonna do the wreath and there's a little pointer for the wreath because there is a little point here and there's a reason for that because with your framelits there's also a point right here so when you're cutting you want this point to match up with that and it will fit perfectly so then I'm gonna stamp that and then I'm gonna stamp the bow in cherry cobbler And I have all of the framelits that will cut these out. So you will take it to the big shot, line them all up. I already did this because, but I wanted to show you. So you can line them all up. And here's the center of the wreath, which goes in the same direction. And then run it through your big shot, and you will get this. And I have a bow somewhere. It's little, so it got lost a little bit. So I'll move that out of the way. And my ink. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment. And for the sentiment, I need a piece that's two inches wide. So let me grab another piece of scrap and I'm going to quickly cut this at two inches because I'm using our tag topper punch and you need it to be two inches wide for it. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment first and I'm doing that in our archival basic black. put it right there and it's a pretty pretty 
print. I really like this stamp. And then I will take, this is the Ornate Tag Topper, and that's the one I'm using for this. So I like to use it this way. See, it fits right in here, but I can see exactly where I'm punching. And then you have that really cute little top. And I'm just, I'm going to eyeball this. I did this with my trimmer before. And then I rounded the corners also on this one. So we're ready to put this all together. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the Baker's Twine in the white. And we're going to put this on. And I'm just going to run it through that same little hole. Sorry, I think I just lost my fast fuse. So I'm going to put it through that same little slit. And if you line it up, you can see it. You can do this first if you want to. Sometimes I need to help it along a little bit with my little poker thing. <laughs> nope, it came through. Okay, so we're going to tie that on. Get this all set and then we'll decorate the front. And I'm just going to tie a knot. And just fix your ribbon how you like it. It needs to be a lot prettier. Like that. Okay, so let's put these on. What I did on here is I colored some little there's little pine cones on here so I just colored those in with my Stampin Write markers just to add detail to to this and then I used some of my red um, cherry cobbler dazzling diamonds and I just put some like berries on here and not a lot and you want this to dry too before you um, put it on because you will have a big mess if you don't do this ahead of time so then these I just colored some little berries in here I like to use this other size it's so much quicker It just adds a little bit of a uh, color. And then I also, I'm not going to do it on the wreath because um, I also use some of these dazzling diamonds on there. So now I need to get some of my dimensionals. And carefully now, since this is wet, I'm just going to put them on here because then I won't have to mess up my dazzling diamonds I just put on there. And then peel your backing off and then this sets right on the windowsill. And then you're going to attach the wreath and I also use dimensionals for this. I just like it. Um, it popped up better. I use the dimensionals and everything and I just use these little pieces on the ends and put that on the wreath put the wreath up here and then I also put a little piece on the bow And then put the bow down here. And now I'm going to just add a few dazzling diamonds. Of the, the, the cherry cobbler. Just a few, just to get, give it that little bit of bling. And when it dries, it's really cute. 
So that is it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the project. It's really cute, and um, it's well worth the effort. There's not, really, it's not hard to do. Once you get your windows cut in, and all, it's, it's not hard at all. So if you have any questions on it, just let me know. Um, go to my blog at stampingwiththemora.com and leave me a comment, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. But that's it for today. If you need any supplies for this project, you can shop right from my blog at stampingwiththemora.com. And I hope you enjoyed it. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thanks. See you later. Bye.